What's up everybody, welcome to part 3 of Castlevania 4, and this game, I just keep learning more and more about this game as each day goes along. It has a really, really interesting development cycle. This game right here, Super Castlevania 4, was almost ported to the Sega Genesis, and I'm not just creating a rumor mill, I'm not just pulling anything out of my ass, this is actual fact that you can look up on the internet. Factor 5 was behind the porting process, and these were the same guys that made the Turrican games as well as the Star Wars Rogue Squadron games later on. They recreated a couple of levels from this game, specifically the Mode 7 part with the chandeliers, and apparently Konami was very proud of the effort, but they decided to not go through with the project for some reason. Konami would pull the Genesis work in-house, and everything was just lost to time, it's just... No Genesis version of Castlevania 4. That would have been interesting though, but then again, Super Castlevania 4 has a better ring than Mega Castlevania 4. You get what I did there? Mega, because Mega Drive. Uh, yeah. I don't know though, it could have been interesting. And Factor 5 still got to work with Konami on porting Castlevania. Not Castlevania, Contra 3, The Alien Wars, for the Nintendo Game Boy, so all was still good in the end. They just had to focus on strictly what was best for business and what would sell more. And even though Factor 5 didn't have anything to do with Bloodlines, we still got a Castlevania game on the Sega Genesis later on, so... We won the best of both worlds, Factor 5 in Konami and a Sega Genesis Castlevania game. And with all that said, your biggest question is probably... Wait, the Sega Genesis can do Mode 7, but how? Your guess is as good as mine. For this section, I just like to skip every everything. I just uh, jump down the stairs. There's no real bombless pits in that area unless you just fall through the stairs at the very bottom, but why would you do that? Now, the library level is not bad, but it is definitely my least favorite part of the game. It's uh, It can drag, and it's uh, slow, and you got these platforming sections. And also the music's not all there, it's just a really kind of tedious level in my opinion. But I will say, the next two levels are grade A Castlevania 4 awesomeness. Those portraits in the background... Portraits of Ruin. I mean, what? They grab onto you unless you destroy the arm. Once you destroy the arm, they just kind of make this gloomy face and they're not a problem anymore. And these Axe Knights return from the ballroom, you just hit them four times and they're dead. They just do their usual stick, they're not that menacing, honestly. Not in this game, at least. And uh, you got the spikes here, but these aren't the low-hanging spikes. You don't have to worry about these unless you jump into the spikes like an idiot. But once you get to the low-hanging spikes, that's when you have to actively press and hold down in order to not stab your hand to the spikes. Ow! Okay, you got your cheap hit on me there. Freaking bitch. But as you can see, the golems wielding the clubs in those portraits do a lot more damage than the Axe Knights. That's going to change real soon. This snake creature right here is a special case. You can kill it, but it takes a lot of hits and it will eventually leave the screen, so you gotta be quick. It will only give you a lot of points, but seeing as points give you extra lives, I'd say try to kill the snake as best as you can. And one more thing, this is the only time where this thing actually appears. I don't think it appears anywhere else in the game, or even in other Castlevania games, so say goodbye to Snake Man. But we're reaching closer to the end of the stage, which is a good thing because the next couple of stages are just awesome. Watch out for that hump in the floor, that will kill you if you're not pressing the crouch button.
This is a really cool boss right here. It's one of those fights where the boss will lose more weapons the more you hit him. This guy throws his axe in a similar way the other axe armors do except his axe is larger than theirs. Make of that what you will. Dirty minds. And once his axe is destroyed he'll just pull out his sword and start slashing at you. It's nothing too convoluted. That fall would have killed an ordinary man, but since it's Simon Belmont, he is no ordinary man. Now it's time for my favorite part of the game, along with my other favorite parts of the game. It's the torture chamber. Now in the American version of this level, there will be green acid that will flow through the chambers. But here in the Japanese version, everything is red, like it's blood. And the red stuff still hurts you if you fall into it, so be careful. Now with this censorship, I can see where Nintendo is coming from, and it's Nintendo being Nintendo, as usual. But then again, you are allowing a game about a vampire and vampire killers onto your system, so why not just allow a little bit of blood? And also, there were some games, even before Mortal Kombat, that somehow managed to fly below Nintendo's radar. Does anybody remember Abadox? So what I'm saying is, rating systems actually rock because we actually get to see violent video games now, and people can't complain as much. Or they still choose to complain, but it's really their fault because they don't see the rating. And they're probably bad parents anyway. But moving back onto subject, this part is actually kind of challenging. This is the point in the game where everything starts to get a little bit harder. We are in Castlevania after all, after all but everything is uh, ramping up slowly. And I also love the theme to the torture chamber. It's just tribal drums and it sounds excellent. I've been using it for the end of my Castlevania 4 parts. It's definitely one of the more atmospheric pieces in the game, but trust me, you'll love it. But back on subject with Nintendo's policy for censoring games in the 90s, this ain't the 90s anymore. Nintendo's actually grown up. <laughs> Hell, I even argue that Sony's censoring more of their games, and Nintendo is starting to be the edgy boy in the room. And just for that, Nintendo, I give you thanks. Please release Mother 3 in America. If you fall in the blood, you will not die instantly, but your health will drain rather quickly. Just keep jumping in and out of the blood until you make it to dry land. But there will be a part coming up that if you jump into the blood, the platform will be too high, and therefore, you can't get back out. It's basically the Mystic Cave Spike Pit, except nowhere near as egregious, and you also start at the beginning of the screen instead of the beginning of the level. Damn it, Mystic Cave! Be careful of this staircase section right here. There are floating spikes and they are one hit kills. There's some good attention to detail in the background. You got skeletons that are chained up and they make this really jittery movement as well as the sound effect. And the two frame animation on the skeleton somehow adds to the creepiness of the area. This part right here you can either jump to the left or go to the right. I usually just go right because jumping to the left is really tight, you can still get nicked on the spikes. Oh, I can't believe I'm actually bringing this up in part 3 of Castlevania 4. Wow, I'm late. But those urns that I pick up give you invincibility. Make good use of it. It still doesn't help you against bottomless pits or crushing, even though I don't think they give the urn to you in those situations. But be careful anyway. And definitely be careful of this part because you will die instantly.
This is gonna take a while. Simon duck walks pretty slow. The armor weighs 200 pounds and shit. Simon, get some better fucking armor. Here's Frankenstein's monster, who is a bit of a pushover in this game. The monster will throw out these potion-like bottles. One of them is a hologram like you just saw, which will take some hits. The other is a spread shot, which will burst into flames on the ground. And I forgot what the- oh, the third one is basically just a fire on the ground. That one's pretty harmless, actually. Failure! I whipped too soon, therefore I couldn't do the dramatic Castlevania pose. I suck. The next level is another personal favorite of mine. It's the treasure room. It's like Dracula robs Scrooge McDuck or something. The music is way too damn good. Now, the treasure room can be dangerous. This is where the skeletons, who are oddly enough gold too, start to take two hits rather than one, so you gotta be prepared for that. And also, I almost died there. You can die a lot here. And another neat thing about this level, whenever you whip into candles, you'll find more money bags than anything, which is not good for my kleptomania in video games. I like collecting money. <laughs> So don't do this to me, Castlevania 4, please. Oh god, I just missed out on the top route. I could have gotten a lot of money. No! God. Yeah, I have a thing with money in video games. I also like the ghosts in the background. It's probably all the unfortunate souls who failed to get all the money. Simon Belmont's gonna be a very rich man when he gets out. Oh great, vacuum holes. I hate vacuum holes in video games. Luckily you could just skip over it. See? Not a problem. It I didn't mean to pick up the stopwatch. <laughs> God damn it. The pocket watch stops time as per usual in Castlevania games, but it cannot be double or triple. Had to take a listen to the music, I just had to. Now, after all my rambling about my favorite levels in this game, what's your guys' favorite levels? I'm curious. Oh god, moving casket. Well, why does Dracula have a casket in his treasure room? For this section, you have to jump onto platforms that form on these spikes, and once you get across the one hit kill spikes, there will be vacuum holes. And here's another good attention to detail, the spikes are glowing because of the gold surrounding it. The caskets don't move around this section, which is probably for the best because that would have been annoying with all the vacuum holes. 
and more bone dragons. I think they're the most prevalent enemies in the game right next to the axe armors. You're going to see them a lot later on. This section right here can be troublesome because, just like in Castlevania 3, if you jump down to a platform that's uh, off screen, technically, you will die because it's, it's not ex it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> uh, again, old video game logic. If a platform's not visible, you might as well jump into a pit. So I make a slip up here and I fall to my death because I got knocked back. Here, you're gonna see it soon. That was my fault for going to the right instead of going to the left. If you go to the left, you'll have a more safer means of fighting the Bone Dragon. And despite the clever advice I gave you, I still go to the right anyway, and thus the conflict of past me and present me continue. Even though... Depending on what time this part goes up, present me would already be past me. Don't judge me, okay? But there is a way to get this dragon from behind, you just have to be really precise and also be careful not to fall into the pit because you have to be on the edge of this platform. Ooh, more money! I'm telling you, this is my favorite level in the game because of the money. And also the atmosphere of the level too, I just like the, really, the gold aesthetic. You just keep making your way up the stairs and you'll eventually come across the boss of this level which is a bat made out of gold. Which is actually a really fun boss fight. And traffic's a bitch, I'm not sure if you heard that, but there was a whole bunch of cars just passing by the front of my apartment, so bear with the noise or actually I could just cut the audio off for a second, hold on. There we go, now that's better, like 10 minutes later. <laughs> yeah, I t I'm telling you, traffic... If you get into let's plays or walkthroughs, make sure you're in a very quiet room or the back of your apartment because now they're birds. <laughs> One thing leads to another. Another 10 minutes later. And also, be sure to get some sort of noise reducer slash pop reducer for your mic because whenever you make a P or an S sound, it tends to, those speech mannerisms tend to make a staticky effect on your mic, which can be annoying to listen to. And somehow I haven't done that yet. <laughs> but I don't know why I'm giving you tips on how to do a Let's Play, even though I'm not really that good at doing Let's Plays myself. I am an amateur at best. Look at my sub count. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not even on the subject of this boss. This guy is uh, pretty fun to fight. He, whenever you hit him, he splits up into four shrapnel pieces, which can hit you, and it does very little damage, so it's not even that big a deal. And once he gets to half health, he'll split into three other batch bats, which will uh, also shoot out four shrapnel pieces when you hit them. Be careful of those. Alright, time to make up for my dramatic Castlevania pose by making my whip float in mid-freaking air. What sorcery is this? Why is my whip floating in mid-air? Dracula! <laughs> anyway, that's going to be the end of part 3 of Castlevania 4. Tune in for the finale.